The first movie made more money than the guy who invented pants. Okay, they can't just dust off one of the famous X, but how about that putz with the giant pigeon wings? Back in 2016, Ryan Reynolds was riding high. Deadpool was the highest grossing R-rated film of all time, and the studio greenlit the sequel. But arguments between Reynolds and Tim Miller made the director leave the project and stalling it a bit. Regardless, Deadpool 2 was underway and nothing could stop it. Ryan squeezed his ass once again into those red spandex and once more bombarded us with promotional video after promotional video and the movie opened big. But is the movie any good? Let's find out. I'm Mephisto. Like, share, and subscribe because this is my review of the movie Deadpool 2. Fine! I'll start from the beginning. My name is Deadpool and I'm an X-Man. Trainee! Shut it! Deadpool 2 continues the same kind of storytelling as the original Deadpool in the way of telling the story in a non-linear way up to a certain point. Essentially, Deadpool goes on a killing spree of a bunch of mafia heads, which leads them to retaliate and send an assassin that kills not him, but Vanessa. This causes Wade to go into deep depression, ending up trying to commit suicide. There's gotta be some way to die. I just need to die harder, trademark Fox. Y'all caught up now? This leads him to having a vision of Vanessa, but that doesn't go anywhere because Wade's healing factor pulls him out of it. I'm terribly sorry for the loss, Wade. You are broken. Oh God, I know that voice. Colossus takes Wade to recuperate in the X-Men mansion and brings him to the fold as a trainee, which on the first mission out, he kind of botches it and ends up going to mutant prison. When was the last time you saw a plus size superhero? Never. The industry discriminates. Fuck superheroes. Meanwhile, Cable appears and wants a piece of Russell, the kid that Deadpool wanted to save and became friends with him inside the jail cell. During the commotion of Cable's arrival, Wade manages to escape and decides with the help of Vanessa to help out Russell and make sure he doesn't turn to evil. For that, he recruits a few mutant friends to help him out and he creates the X-Force. Just once I'm gonna find a planet of people that are worse than me at everything, a whole bunch of functional idiots. I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna be their Superman. Isn't that Canada? You shut your goddamn trash mouth. Ryan Reynolds is back in the red spandex, and it seems like it's just more of the same that we got from Deadpool 1. The quit whip, the sharp comebacks, the pop culture references are plenty, sprinkled in with some good old fashioned jabs at superheroes and 20th Century Fox, and of course, general Ryan shenanigans. Oh. Oh, this isn't Gilbert's. I am so sorry. This is exactly why I said in my Deadpool review that Reynolds seemed to have been destined to play this character. He carries the entire movie on his back, but this time, and this is mostly due to the success of the first film, he got a lot more budget to play with, and it really shows because they went all out. It's just a bit of a shame that all of my favorite jokes ended up in the trailer, taking the piss of the fact that Josh Brolin is the one playing Cable. Give me your best shot, one-eyed Willie. Speaking of Brolin, I think they kind of nailed it on the head with the casting on this one and probably the rest of the X-Force members. Having him pulling a double duty in a Marvel franchise and in the MCU helped write some of Deadpool's jokes all by themselves. But Brolin held his own and played off great as the serious superhero to Deadpool's goofy one. Give us the line again. I need your help. And trust me, I'm even less happy about this than you are, but you unleashed the juggernaut, you dumb c one of the major things that differentiate the first and second movies was the willingness to go deep into the pockets and get those juicy cameos. The newer X-Men, the X-Force members, and to finally come up with a great alternative depiction of the Juggernaut and turn him from this... I'm the Juggernaut, bitch! into this menacing brute that is hard to kill or subdue and one that does not really seem to announce himself to be a badass. Zip it, Thanos, we have a deal and you fuck ah! oh. Hey, I'm gonna shove that cab driver right up your ass. Where the casting kind of falls flat is with Russell, the fire fist. In order to make the story work, he had to be a kid and sadly, Julian Dennison was not really up to the task. He always came off as a brat and was kind of lost even before Wade took the time to try and save him from his own fate. 
even if I am being harsh on the guy, I think that the whole story of the kid being redeemed was a little bit of a ham-fisted, but served as the main motivation of the entire movie. When the powers that be went with the Cable storyline, they kind of set themselves up for a bit of a failure. I got two charges, one to get me here, one to get me home. Well, that's just lazy writing. I don't mean that the story was total crap, but in every movie that you introduce time traveling as a problem solver or a mechanism that, that isn't really the main focus of your story, it always suffers for it. A great example for this is Avengers Endgame. The storyline in the movie suffers greatly because of the introduction of the time traveling solution and the five year leap forward. The same kind of thing applies to Deadpool 2. But putting aside my minor gripe of the story, I still think the movie is fun to watch. It was as funny as the first film and I really enjoyed the theater reaction at the time. This is why I'm recommending it, but I have a caveat. Although the movie is funny and has great action set piece, it's far too long and has a lot more weak points in the story. It always felt like it was a little bit too much and a little bit overly long. The runtime clocked in at around two hours, which is about 15 minutes more than the original, but at times it felt a bit longer. Overall, it is a solid sequel to the first film, but like many other sequels in the past, it really is hard to beat the original, even if you are named Ryan Reynolds. Oh. Oh. Ah. oh God, that hurts. Suck it, Mel Gibson. I thank you for watching, and remember, hope is a good thing, maybe even the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. I'll see you on the next video.